गूगल अ नेम दैट हैज बिकम सिनोनिमस विथ इनोवेशन इंफॉर्मेशन एंड इंटरनेट सर्च दिस जायट ऑफ डिजिटल वर्ल्ड हैज बिकम अवर गो टू फॉर जस्ट अबाउट एवरीथिंग इट्स लाइक अ स्विस आर्मी नाइफ फॉर द इंटरनेट whether you wants to know a quick fact send an email save your holiday photos or find the best route to a restaurant google is there serving your every need with applications like gmail google maps and youtube google has redefined productivity communication and entertainment creating an entire ecosystem that billions depend on daily but have you ever wonder how it all started How did Google go from being such a small idea to one of the biggest companies in the world? The story of Google is nothing short of amazing. It's filled with moments of creativity, tough challenges, and strong will to make information easy for everyone. It shows us what can happen when smart people don't give up on good ideas, work hard, and dare to think differently. So let's dive deep into Google's journey, exploring how it started. how it grew and how it changed the world let's turn the clock back way back to mid 90s a time that feels almost simple compared to today's fast paced world the year is 1996 and cinemas are buzzing with the action of mission impossible 1 and bookshelves are being introduced to a novel titled a game of thrones by george r r martin the first in a series that would capture the imagination of millions amongst all of this Something monumental is happening in the prestigious grounds of Stanford University in California. A young PhD student named Larry Page in his quest to find a captivating topic for his dissertation was playing with the idea of going deeper into mathematical networks of world wide web. He wanted to understand its intricate link structure, visualizing it as a massive graph. It was his supervisor Terry Wingard who saw the potential in this idea and nudge him towards it a piece of advice larry would later recall as the best advice i ever got this pivotal moment of larry's dissertation led to the birth of backrub a search engine project that was about to break new ground it was soon joined by sergey who was supported by national science foundation graduate fellowship the two had first met in the summer of 1995 when larry was part of a group of potential new students that sergey had volunteered to give tour around the campus and nearby san francisco both sergey and larry were working on the stanford digital library project the sdlp's goal was to develop the enabling technology for single integrated and universal digital library and it was funded through national science foundation amongst other federal agencies including cia and national security agency So as Larry was bubbling with the idea he shared his vision with Scott Hassan a brilliant coder who would soon start translating these ideas into reality Scott played a crucial role in these early days so much so that he is often referred as the third founder of Google he was the one writing the initial lines of code however Scott Hassan's journey with Google was a brief one he was instrumental in creating original code for the Google search engine but he decided to leave before google transformed from a research project into the official company we know it as today however his passion for robotics led him down to a different path and eventually he founded a company called willow garage in 2006 in march of 1996 larry set his web crawler loose on the internet starting with nothing but his own stanford homepage as a reference point and both larry and sergey were on a mission They wanted to convert the backlink data they collected for the web pages into reliable measure of page importance. This ambition led to the creation of page rank algorithm. So before we start understanding what page rank algorithm is, first let's understand that what is the purpose for creating this page rank algorithm. Well, Larry Page and Sergey Brin they wanted to check that for any given particular web page uh, how important that is for any given search so the purpose is they actually wanted to create a directory of entire internet where for every single web page that is currently present on the internet is going to have a rank and that rank would determine that how important that particular web page is for any given search result 
Now let's assume that currently these four circles represent four different web pages in the internet and we will try to implement the page rank algorithm on each one of them. What Larry Page suggested is that rather than treating these as single entities, we are actually going to treat these as the nodes inside a graph and we are also going to have edge between any two nodes in the graph or any two web pages in the graph. Now how would this edge be created? Let's assume that inside this current web page D, we actually have some information that points back to point web page number A or hyperlink that points back to web page number A. In this case, we are going to treat uh, A as having one incoming edge or D has having one outgoing edge. Same thing, let's assume that for B, it has an edge going out to C where it points C for some information. So that is also going to be determined as one out one incoming edge for C. And through this, we are going to determine the page rank. So for page rank, we are going to consider two items. First item is that by default page rank of any particular web page, plus how many number of incoming edges it is going to have. And both of the combination of these two items, we are going to assign some number values. So let's assume for simplicity that currently the page rank is four for each one of the web page on its own without any information coming, coming from the outside. Now on top of this value, we are also going to have some edges coming in and out. So let's draw some edges. On top of that, for ease of simplicity, we are determining that every single edge holds the weight one. So in this case, currently this edge holds weight one and same goes for all the other edges. So uh, considering that currently web page number A actually ha already has page rank value of four. So it is going to a value of four plus it has three incoming edges coming from all three web pages. So the value is going to be seven for this. Now for web page number B, it also has web page or value of four plus it has two incoming edges coming in. So its value is going to be six. Same goes for web page number C. C also has two incoming edges coming in. So the page rank for C is also going to be six. And for D, it only has one incoming edge coming in. So the page rank for D is only going to be value number four. So now after this calculation, we actually have the page ranks for A, B, C and D. And depending on those, we can determine that currently A is the most important page compared to all the other B, C and D pages. So whenever anyone tries to search for a result or search for a query, we are going to show A as the first priority result that it is the most likely page that contains the most important information. And this was revolutionary. A groundbreaking approach to sifting through the web's massive extensive content. As they analyze the results from the back rub their search engine project, it became evident that their method of ranking pages based on their backlink importance was far superior to the existing search engine of that time, which mainly ranked pages by how often the search term would appear on a particular website. With a strong conviction that pages with most meaningful links pointing back to them must be the most relevant to the searches. Larry Page and Sergey, they put their theory to the test. This was part of their academic journey but unknowingly, they were laying down the groundworks for the future search engines. By August of 1996, the first version of Google made its debut on Stanford's website. Despite its infancy, Google was already a bandwidth powerhouse, using almost half of Stanford's entire network capacity. Though in the early days, Larry and Sergey had already set the wheels in motion. They had sparked a revolution in information and technology, setting the stage for Google's evolution. After successful tryouts, Larry decided to patent PageRank algorithm and wrote a white paper on that in 1998. In that paper, he linked his algorithm to a very similar algorithm named RankDex, another site scoring system developed by Robin Lee back in 1996. Well, as it turned out, Robin Lee, propelled by his groundbreaking work on Rank Desk, went on to find a search engine of his own named Baidu that has become integral to the digital life in China. The trajectory of these technologies tells a compelling story 
of how ideas built upon website ranking system has played a pivotal role in the development of two of the world's largest search engines, Google and Baidu. Now going back to the Google story, back in 1998, Larry and Sergey took their creations out of the dorm of Stanford and began reaching out to various investors and venture capitals for funding. During this time, they settled to a garage near the Stanford campus and the duo spent the winter of 1998 operating and building from that garage. Now in August 1998, Google received its first initial funding of $100,000 from Andy Bechtolsheim, co-founder of Sun Microsystems. And this promoted the founders to register a corporation to represent their search engine. Originally, they decided to change the name from Backrub to Google, a word that means a very large number, that is one followed by 100 zeros. But as fate would have it, a spelling mistake gave the birth to the name Google. After their initial funding, they began attracting notable investors and secure funding of nearly one million dollars. Now, Jeff Bezos, Ram Sriram, and David Sheraton were among the early investors. And the newly created income flow allowed Google to open their first office in the Menlo Park, California. By 1999, Google was already showing exponential growth in its popularity and income stream. Also, it managed to secure additional funding of 25 million dollars. After that, they moved to the heart of the Silicon Valley and started to become a household name. In 2001, they hired a new CEO named Eric Schmidt, who would remain with Google for another decade in the same position. Also, Google started to generate more and more traffic, and it created more revenue for them. With the growing trend, they decided to go public and created an initial public offering in 2004. At that time, Larry, Sergey, and Eric Schmidt agreed to work for Google for the next 20 years or until 2024. Now Google share were actually sold in an online auction format that was created by Morgan Stanley and the initial public offering was very successful as it gave Google a market capitalization of more than 23 billion dollars in 2004 making it one of the biggest companies at that time after that Google kept bringing in new products like Google Maps Chrome Gmail Orkut and also acquired companies like YouTube Android and DoubleClick By 2011, Google had already firmly established itself as a search engine giant, handling 3 billion researches every day and attracting 1 billion unique users in a single month. However, this impressive status was merely a stepping stone for the company as it was far away from reaching its peak. Google continued its path of relentless growth, acquiring numerous companies and launching a plethora of global products. Today Google has expanded its influence across vast array of sectors including but not limited to technology advertisement consumer electronics computer software artificial intelligence cloud computing and hardware its significant presence span over the globe showcasing diverse portfolio and unwavering commitment to innovation with no signs of slowing down Google continues to dominate and shape various industries setting new standards for excellence and ingenuity the company's dedication to improving internet accessibility and speed is evident through projects like google fiber google's advancements in artificial intelligence and machine learning have not only enhanced its own products but have also contributed to the broader tech industry driving progress in areas such as language processing computer vision and predictive analysis by 2023 Google has solidified its status as one of the most important, powerful and influential companies in the world with over 257 acquisitions and a large array of products and services under its belt. The company's unwavering commitment to innovation, quality and user experience continues to set it apart, ensuring its role as a key player in global tech landscape for years to come. And after hearing this entire history of Google, One has to imagine that from humble beginnings of university research project Google has transcended boundaries and expectations to become the beacon of innovation and a testament to the power of dreams Larry Page and Sergey Brin two visionary students at Stanford University embarked on a mission to organize world's information unknowingly setting the stage 
for a revolution. What started as lines of code in a dorm room has transformed into an unparalleled empire, touching the lives of billions across the globe. Google has redefined the way we seek information, connect with each other, and navigate our digital experiences, becoming an indispensable part of our daily lives. It stands as living proof that with passion, perseverance, and relentless pursuit of innovation, even the most audacious dreams can be realized. Today, Google continues to push the boundaries of what is possible, embodying a force of progress and inspiration, showing us that the journey of innovation is never ending and that the power to change the world resides in every individual with a dream and the courage to pursue it.